For decades, the abrupt vanishing of Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthals, from the landscapes of Europe and Asia roughly 40,000 years ago, coinciding with the arrival and expansion of our own ancestors, Homo sapiens, has confounded scientists. Having thrived for over 300,000 years, weathering the brutal climatic swings of the Pleistocene Ice Age, their relatively rapid demise after encountering modern humans remains one of the biggest unanswered questions in our species' history. Researchers have long pondered the cause, with one provocative theory suggesting they might have succumbed to viral infections that plague us even today. This pathogen hypothesis was first formally proposed around 2010 by researchers and offered an elegant, albeit difficult to prove, explanation. And the core idea was simple. When modern humans migrated into Europe and Asia, they carried with them a unique microbial burden, viruses, bacteria, and parasites endemic to their ancestral homeland. Neanderthals, evolving largely in isolation in Eurasia for hundreds of thousands of years, would have possessed immune systems calibrated to fight their local pathogens, not the novel African ones arriving with Homo sapiens. This pathogen naivete could have been catastrophic. Diseases that cause mild or manageable illness in modern humans might have exploded with devastating virulence in a Neanderthal population encountering them for the first time, potentially acting as a significant factor in their extinction. Initial support for this theory was circumstantial but intriguing. Genetic studies of modern viruses occasionally hinted at ancient divergence times that roughly aligned with human migration patterns. Sophisticated mathematical models simulating contact between the two populations suggested that even moderately transmissible pathogens could spread rapidly through the smaller, likely more isolated Neanderthal groups, estimated to number only in the low tens of thousands spread across vast territories causing significant mortality. However, the critical piece of evidence proving specific pathogens actually infected Neanderthals remained elusive. The fundamental challenge lay in the nature of ancient DNA. After tens of thousands of years, genetic material becomes fragile and undergoes degradation due to exposure to elements like freeze-thaw cycles and groundwater and contamination by environmental microbes. Therefore, extracting identifiable viral DNA from such ancient bone seemed very difficult. The search for this evidence led researchers to the Shagirskaya Cave. Located in the foothills of the Altai Mountains in southern Siberia, this cave has proven to be an exceptional repository of Neanderthal life. Excavations have yielded thousands of stone tools characteristic of the Mycakian tradition, abundant butchered animal bones, including bison, horse, and mountain sheep, and crucially, the fossilized remains of multiple Neanderthal individuals. Critically, these remains date back approximately 50,000 years placing them squarely within the window of potential contact with early modern humans migrating across Eurasia. The cave's perpetually cold and stable environment acts like a natural deep freezer and therefore offers ideal conditions for the preservation of fragile organic molecules, including DNA. The primary focus of the team was the skeletal remains of two adult male Neanderthals unearthed at Chagarskaya, specifically ancient DNA extraction. Their goal was to recover ultra-short, damaged DNA fragments from the ancient bone powder. This was molecular detective work at its most challenging. They weren't only reconstructing the Neanderthal genome itself, but they were also searching the genetic data for traces of foreign invaders, essentially viral DNA that might have integrated into the host's cells or left faint molecular signatures within the bone matrix itself. The next stage involved sophisticated computational power. Using advanced sequencing technology and bioinformatic tools, the researchers compared every single recovered DNA fragment against vast databases containing the genomes of known microbes and viruses. Eventually, the team identified fragmented but statistically significant sequences of DNA belonging unmistakably to three distinct modern virus families. First, they identified traces of adenovirus. Today, this ubiquitous family, comprising over 50 human serotypes, is a primary cause of the common cold, conjunctivitis, or pink eye, and gastrointestinal distress. While often presenting as a mild illness, certain strains, such as adenovirus 14 or adenovirus 7, can cause severe life-threatening pneumonia and respiratory illness, particularly in vulnerable populations like infants, the elderly, or those with compromised immune systems. Its presence in the Neanderthal bones suggests the familiar miseries of coughs, sneezes, fevers, and stomach upset were burdens shared by our ancient cousins tens of thousands of years ago. Second, they discovered the signature of a herpes virus, likely an ancestor of herpes simplex virus, or HSV, from the data. These viruses are known for their immune evasion and latency. After the initial infection, they hide from the immune system indefinitely, 
only to periodically reactivate. This lifelong persistence makes them prime candidates for detection in ancient remains. Herpes viruses can cause devastating complications, such as herpes simplex encephalitis or inflammation of the brain, particularly in newborns or immunocompromised individuals with historically high mortality rates, even before modern treatments. The potential impact of such a virus on a naive Neanderthal population encountering it possibly for the first time would have been catastrophic. Finally, the analysis revealed the presence of papillomavirus, HPV. Primarily transmitted through intimate contact today, HPV is known for causing cases of persistent infection with high-risk strains, notably HPV-16 and HPV-18, leading to various cancers. Its discovery within Neanderthal remains hints at intimate interactions within their social groups, and also the potential for severe, untreatable health consequences extending far beyond visible warts, including fatal cancers. This discovery is nothing short of revolutionary in the field of paleovirology, shattering previous records. The oldest confirmed ancient human virus identified prior to this breakthrough was a 31,000-year-old herpes virus found in Homo sapiens teeth from the Yana rhinoceros horn site, also in Siberia. While not definitive proof that viruses were the sole or primary cause of Neanderthal extinction, this discovery transforms the pathogen hypothesis from a speculative notion into a highly plausible and critically testable scenario. We now possess concrete evidence that these specific, potentially debilitating viruses were present within Neanderthal populations at a critical point in their history. The paramount question now becomes, what was their impact? For the first time, we also gain direct molecular insight into the disease burden Neanderthals might have carried, moving beyond theoretical reconstructions of their immune system based on recovered genes to tangible evidence of actual infection. While viruses alone may not have been the sole executioner, this research reveals Neanderthal vulnerability in the face of novel microscopic threats. A small band of Neanderthals would already have been stressed by a rapidly changing climate, while also competing with technologically sophisticated newcomers for access to dwindling herds of megafauna. Then, being ravaged by a respiratory plague, adenovirus, debilitating fevers and neurological complications, herpes, or wasting cancers, HPV, pathogens potentially introduced through contact, such outbreaks could have decimated critical kinship groups, shattered essential social networks, and pushed already precarious populations irreversibly over the brink to extinction. The detection of these viruses' DNA within the 50,000-year-old bones of Neanderthals is a landmark achievement. More research is already underway. And with advancing technologies in ancient DNA recovery and genome sequencing, future studies are expected to shed far more light on the role that infectious diseases may have played not just in Neanderthal extinction, but in shaping human evolution itself. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. What do you think played the biggest role in the disappearance of the Neanderthals? Until next time.